What is up my friends? It is Thursday, it is the Anfield Agenda News Roundup and I am recording this at about 6 o'clock. So if you're watching this before half past 8, hope to see you on the live stream tonight. If I don't, maybe I'll see you at the weekend. We're going to be starting the watch along for the Brighton game from 1pm. Now, today's stories that I'm going to go through mainly revolve around two subjects. The managerial situation and the injury concerns. Good news and not bad news, but uncertain news in that regard. So, let's start off with some good news. Now, before I get into it, you know the drill i'm gonna have my say but i want you guys to let us know your thoughts in the comment section drop a like on the video if you enjoy it and please do hit that subscribe button so let's start off with the good news well darwin nunez and ryan gravenberg are both recovered and ready to go i say recovered there was little niggles and they were kept off international duty and that seemingly done the job so darwin nunez and ryan gravenberg uh, as per lewis steely said darwin nunez and ryan gravenberg are now okay after staying behind on merseyside during the international break Brilliant. We need them both coming into this business part of the season. Uh, and the good news keeps coming. Joel Matip has been pictured doing a little bit of running on the pitch. Now, I'm not saying he's anywhere near getting back onto the pitch, and I still don't believe he will get a chance to play before the season ends. But for his recovery... It's a great step and one that I'm sure you guys will join me in wishing Joel all the best in that recovery. I still think he departs at the end of the season along with Thiago Alcantara, but you can't help but like Joel Matip, you know. So wishing him all the best in his recovery and it's certainly good news. Alison Becker, I'm still none the wiser on. Um, lots of nothing really on Alison Becker. It's just very, very quiet. Curtis Jones, well, good news on Curtis Jones, at least according to, I think it was Ian Doyle, was it? Yes, Ian Doyle of The Echo said, Curtis Jones is expected to be in contention to face Brighton on Sunday, which is again good news because we need all hands to the pump at this end of the season. You know, we've got what nine or ten league games to go, and obviously we've got the Europa League still to try and win. So we need as many fit bodies as we can. Uh, it looks like Diogo Jota and Trent Alexander Arnold will be the week after, so they're hoping to have those guys available for the Manchester United game at Old Trafford on April the 7th. Now, it's not all good news though. Andy Robertson is going to be out. I got you, didn't I? But he's only going to be out for days, so relax. No no need to stress there. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Yeah, Andy Robertson, according to James Pierce, said Andy Robertson is said to be sidelined for days rather than weeks as he avoided any serious injury to his ankle, which is brilliant. It is good that we've got really quality cover, obviously, with Joe Gomez, Costa Simicus, but Robbo's our number one left back, so good news that he's only going to be out for a matter of days. So he should be fully fit and available for the game at Manchester United. At the very latest, maybe he comes in a little bit sooner for the Sheffield United game, but good news on Andy Robertson. He's avoided any serious uh, injury. I won't lie to you, when I seen the images of him going down against Northern Ireland, I was thinking he was going to be out for a while. So a couple of days, that's really good news as far as I'm concerned. Now, the big news today, though, revolves around two managerial choices. A lot of talk on Ruben Amram today and a little bit on Xabi Alonso. It looks to me, from the outside, like they are the two main candidates. Yes, you'll hear some talk about Julian Nagelsmann and probably a little bit about Roberto De Zerbi. But for me, everything is pointing to one of these two gentlemen. And I think Ruben Amram is the second choice, if it's not Xabi Alonso. But he has been tipped for the job by a few people. One of them, a former player of his, Joel Polina, now currently at Fulham. He worked with Ruben Amram at Sporting Lisbon and rates him very highly. He was asked about the possibility of him coming and managing in the Premier League with Liverpool. And this is what Joel Polina had to say. Ruben has a lot of quality, one of the best in Portugal. Uh, he's done an excellent job. He has in-depth knowledge and has a close relationship with his players. The way he's growing, he'll be not in Portugal for much longer. He added, uh, Cape would have taken over at Liverpool. Yes, of course, the pressure is different. When you coach Liverpool, you have pressure from the fans, the club, the whole world. I think it will be a matter of time. Now, that's great news. And it kind of fits in with everything else that I've read and seen about Ruben Amram. He is very, very highly regarded by the players that he works with. What you'll see come up quite a bit with him is his man management as well and his ability to get the best out of his players. One thing that Rupert Amarim won't do, and those of you who watch my Getting to Know series about Amarim, Edwards, uh, Hughes, and a couple of others will know, he doesn't talk about referees. It is something that he refuses to talk about publicly. Now, I think we'll test his patience a little bit if he comes to the Premier League. Let's see if he'll uh, still be able to bide his tongue when Howard Webb and the PGMOL are doing their thing. But as for right now, that is one thing that Ruben Amarim just refuses to talk about after games as referees. So... 
That brings me on to why I think he is seriously a candidate for the job. Obviously, we know he's one of the names, but from my research and from reading between the lines as well, uh, it does look like he, to me, is the best of the rest after Alonso. So David Ornstein today said, Ruben Amarum is definitely among the candidates Liverpool are considering to be their next manager. Which, again, if you add in to Michael Edwards and his fondness for Ruben Amrum, the stats add up, the style of play adds up, and there's a lot to admire about him. I think, honestly, if Alonso chooses to say it by Leverkusen, it will be Ruben Amrum, in my humble opinion. Now, will Xabi Alonso stay it by Leverkusen or not? Well... That's, again, the subject of much conjecture. So, again, Florian Plettenberg today has been talking and he interviewed Max Erbel, who is, of course, coming in to become the sporting director at Bayern Munich. They were talking about the search for the manager and he again reiterated, Plettenberg, I mean here, not Max Erbel, that Jabi Alonso is the number one choice. But it seems Roberto De Zerbi is their second highest choice. So, if and when they lose out on Jabi Alonso, either to Leverkusen or to us, it looks like De Zerbi is their second choice. So, looks like if we do lose out, on Alonso will have pretty much a free run at Ruben Amorim unless Chelsea or one of the other clubs who let's be honest aren't very appealing at the minute decide to throw their hat into the ring um, on Ruben Amorim though I know a lot of you guys are concerned about a name that you don't really know too much about or a name that would be coming in from Portugal and I get it there are concerns but right now if you look at the managerial landscape even Alonso who's a number one target very young somewhat inexperienced but sometimes it's just about having the right dna and i think both of these gentlemen jabby alonso and ruben amaram fit that tone now to move back on to jabby alonso for a minute we will know jabby alonso's decision not just us but everybody over the next three to four weeks so guillaume balaguer has been speaking about jabby alonso and he said alonso is determined to decide his future in the next three to four weeks nothing has been decided yet See what he said there? Nothing has been decided yet. Kind of at odds with what Plettenberg keeps trying to tell us and the world. But hey, we all know that uh, Plettenberg seemingly lives in a world of his own, in my opinion. But Xabi Alonso, it's no real surprise there. Three to four weeks is kind of coming towards the end of the, the league campaign anyway. And you would expect that clubs like Liverpool or Bayern Munich or anybody else after Alonso would kind of want the manager in place because they, of course, then have to look into the transfer market and everything else and what's going to be a really reduced summer with the Euros and Copa America taking place. So, time frame looks about right. I still believe wholeheartedly that Xabi Alonso will be the next Liverpool manager. But what I can't confirm or what I don't feel confident enough to say is will he leave Leverkusen or not? The Bayern Munich stuff, I'm pretty comfortable he'll come to us over Bayern Munich, but I truly don't know at this point if he wants to have one more year at Leverkusen or not. I guess we will find out. So three to four weeks time, my friends. It seems like an eternity, but we will have our answers soon enough. So I hope you can join us tonight because we've lots more stuff to go through in more detail. We'll be talking about the run-in, who was the most difficult run-in. We'll be talking about why Darwin Nunes is quite simply the best striker in the Premier League. And you don't have to take my word for it. You can take up the ESPN and Squawk's word for that. A little bit more tonight at half past eight. So I hope you can join us for that. Thank you again for watching the video. If you liked it, drop a like. And I will talk to you soon, my friends. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.